the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia over the annexation of Crimea has been a significant source of tension and instability in the region since 2014. Despite initial skepticism, Ukraine has managed to repel Russian forces and has set its sights on reclaiming the peninsula. However, retaking Crimea would be a daunting and perilous task as the geography of the region heavily favors the defender. This will explores the various challenges and risks involved in any attempt to retake Crimea and examines potential strategies that Ukraine could employ to make Russia fear losing control of the region. The article also discusses the strategic, demographic, and historical factors at play in the conflict and the potential outcomes of any future resolution. The situation remains complex and dangerous, and any solution must take into account the risks of escalation and instability in the region. On August 23rd of last year, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky made a significant statement, declaring that everything began with Crimea and everything will end with Crimea. This statement encapsulates two key points. First, it acknowledges that the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia began with the 2014 Russian invasion and subsequent annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. Second, President Zelensky made it clear that his ultimate goal is to regain control of Crimea and return it to Ukraine. At the time of Zelensky's statement, this objective appeared to be overly optimistic, as many analysts predicted that Ukraine would not withstand the Russian invasion. However, Ukraine has managed to repel the Russian forces through rapid counter-offensives, and the prospect of retaking Crimea has become more realistic. Despite this momentum, reclaiming Crimea will be a daunting and perilous task for Ukraine. Crimea's geography inherently favors the defender against external attacks. The peninsula is almost an island, connected to the European mainland only by the narrow isthmus of Perakop. This isthmus has historically served as the sole land route for armies invading Crimea without relying on boats or aircraft. Transforming Perakop into a natural choke point, attackers must traverse the isthmus in tightly packed columns, making them vulnerable to concentrated artillery and airstrikes. One possible route for Ukrainian forces to bypass this bottleneck is to the northeast of the peninsula, across a region known as the Savage. This area, consisting of extremely shallow lagoons, can be crossed during low tide, allowing Ukrainian units to flank the defenses at Parakov's rear. However, this approach entails significant risk as the returning high tide can cut off supply lines, leaving the attackers vulnerable to counterattacks. Another way to enter Crimea is through amphibious or airborne assaults along the peninsula's extensive coastline. However, these operations are logistically challenging and Ukraine lacks the necessary landing craft, helicopters, and airplanes to establish naval and air superiority in the Black Sea. Moreover, Ukraine must contend with the well-defended Russian naval base at Sevastopol and Russia's superior naval presence in the Black Sea. The presence of advanced Russian surface-to-air missile systems, such as the S-400, further complicates matters. Retaking Crimea will be an uphill battle for Ukraine, necessitating substantial military resources, political coordination, and logistical planning. The potential risks and costs, including significant loss of life and resources, cannot be ignored. Based on historical examples, Ukraine would need to muster a force significantly larger than the defending Russian troops and be prepared for substantial casualties. Ukraine could attempt to sever the land bridge connecting the Russian mainland to Crimea by advancing through the Zaporizhia and Donetsk provinces. Liberating the cities of Malitonsk and Mariupol would be a significant achievement and would cut off one of Russia's primary supply routes to Crimea. If Ukrainian forces can accomplish this, they would be well positioned to attack the remaining occupied territories in the Kherson province without attempting a risky crossing forcing Russian troops to retreat further into Crimea. However, the plan to attack toward the Sea of Azov and several Russia's land bridge to Crimea also carries risks and challenges. The Russians are aware of Ukraine's intentions and have strengthened their defenses accordingly. The flat terrain along the front line requires additional tanks and armored personnel carriers for the Ukrainian forces to penetrate Russian lines and advance across the steppe. Ukraine has appealed to the West for assistance, and the United States has agreed to send 50 Bradley armored personnel carriers and 30 M1 Abrams main battle tanks. Germany and other European allies have also pledged to provide more Leopard 2 tanks. The situation in Crimea is both complex and fraught with challenges and risks for both Russia and Ukraine. As the most likely location for a Ukrainian attack, Russia is concentrating its newly recruited conscripts in the area. Ukraine, on the other hand, needs more tanks and armored personnel carriers to break through Russian lines and advance across the steppe. 
In response, they have been requesting the necessary equipment from Western countries for months. The United States has agreed to send 50 Bradley armored personnel carriers and 30 M1 Abrams main battle tanks, while Germany and other European allies are providing more Leopard 2 tanks. If the Ukrainians fail to sever the land bridge during their offensive, they risk permanently losing the southern portion of their country, as the Russians will have more time to strengthen their defenses with additional troops and equipment. However, there is another significant reason why the Ukrainians are likely to attack along this front towards the Sea of Azov. They understand that if they succeed in severing Russia's land bridge, the next most obvious objective in Crimea does not favor them geographically during an attack. Instead, they could initiate a blockade of the peninsula, where the geography works more in their favor and against the Russians since it is difficult to get defending reinforcements and supplies into Crimea. Currently, there are only three methods that the Russians can effectively use to get supplies into Crimea. The most efficient method involves supply trucks from the Russian mainland passing through the occupied land bridge in Ukraine and into Crimea from the north. If Ukraine manages to sever the land bridge, that leaves the second most efficient option for Moscow. Lower volumes of road and rail cargoes moving across the Kerch Strait Bridge from the Russian mainland. However, the Ukrainians have already demonstrated their ability to attack this bridge and destroy sections of it. If the Kerch Strait Bridge is completely knocked offline and the Ukrainians advance far enough to sever Russia's land bridge in the north, then Crimea would effectively become an island again for the Russians. Just as it was prior to the construction of the Kerch Strait Bridge in 2018, supplies would then have to come in by the third and least efficient option, ferries by sea and aircraft by sky, both of which could be targeted by Ukrainian drones. This blockade strategy could work in favor of the Ukrainians while minimizing the risk of suffering tens of thousands of casualties in a direct assault on the peninsula. The outcome of this complex and dangerous situation remains uncertain as victory in war is never guaranteed. The situation in Crimea is complex and multifaceted with implications for both Ukraine and Russia. After the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014, the Russian army concentrated a significant number of troops in the region, establishing naval and air bases and support infrastructure. Moscow's control over Crimea has been a major factor in the success and longevity of the Russian invasion in southern Ukraine. As long as Crimea remains under Kremlin control, Ukraine's security will never feel secure. If the current war ends with Moscow still retaining Crimea and Putin remaining in power, there is always the risk, from Kiev's perspective, that the Russians will recover and return in a few years, better prepared than they were in 2022. Crimea's demographics also pose a challenge for Ukraine. Currently, Crimea is a majority ethnic Russian area, likely with strong pro-Russian sentiment. This is partly due to Stalin's deportation of hundreds of thousands of indigenous Tatars during World War II who were replaced by Russian citizens. This demographic manipulation has continued since the 2014 annexation, with pro-Ukrainian Crimean residents leaving, being forcibly expelled or arrested, and the Russian state encouraging the migration of Russian citizens to the peninsula. As a result, Crimea has become even more pro-Russian than before. The strategic importance of Crimea to Russia cannot be overstated, as it provides Russia with a key naval base in the Black Sea and access to the Mediterranean and Atlantic Oceans. Losing control over Crimea would be a devastating blow to Russia's ability to project its naval power and influence world affairs. For Russia, Crimea is of significantly higher strategic interest than it is to Washington or even Brussels, making the Kremlin more willing to gamble and take risks with escalation over Crimea than the US. This is where the risk of Russia's nuclear threats and red lines comes into play when discussing any Ukrainian attack in Crimea. The peninsula is so geopolitically valuable to Russia that there is a risk, albeit small, that the Kremlin may decide it would be worth the risk and escalation to deploy a weapon of mass destruction to avert the outcome. As the situation in Crimea remains complex and dangerous, any future resolution will have to take into account the strategic, demographic and historical factors at play. The international community must tread carefully to avoid further escalation and instability in the region. If Ukrainian troops were to retake Crimea, the fate of the Russians who moved there since Moscow's annexation in 2014 would be uncertain. Senior Ukrainian officials have promised amnesty from criminal prosecution for Crimean residents 
who collaborated with Russia. But this amnesty only applies to those who lived in the peninsula before the 2014 annexation, the 500,000 to 1 million Russian citizens who relocated to Crimea after 2014 would likely not be granted such legal protections given the risks and complexities involved in attacking Crimea. It might be a wiser decision for Ukraine to focus on making Russia fear losing Crimea rather than attempting to take it by advancing through Zaporozhye and Kryvyi by severing Russia's land bridge to Crimea, closing the Crimean Canal and permanently disabling the Kurd Strait Bridge. Ukraine could demonstrate to Moscow that its hold over Crimea is vulnerable and effectively place the peninsula under siege, fearing the loss of Crimea and the strategically important base at Sevastopol. The Russians, including Putin himself, might be more inclined to enter negotiations. Entering negotiations with an upper hand could lead to three possible scenarios for Ukraine. One Crimea diplomatically returns to Ukraine along with the rest of the occupied territories, which would be difficult, if not impossible, for Putin and Russia's current government to accept potentially leading to further escalation in fighting unless Putin is replaced by a more sympathetic government to Russia surrenders all its occupied territories in Ukraine except for Crimea. 3. The establishment of an independent, demilitarized state in Crimea, allowing the Russian Black Sea Fleet to continue using Sevastopol while removing all other military presence from the peninsula, which could help restore Ukraine's territorial integrity and address Russia's security concerns, but may not satisfy hardliners on either side. Considering the size and strategic importance of Crimea, the issue is critical for both nations. Losing control of Crimea would be a significant blow to Russia's ability to project power in the region, particularly in Syria, the Middle East and North Africa. The annexation of Crimea in 2014 has significant support among the Russian people, and the peninsula's demographics are heavily pro-Russian. Any attempt by Ukraine to retake Crimea would face resistance from the local population, making a swift victory challenging. 